Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. Really excited for this video covering the Portland Trailblazers with an offseason preview, continuing the series we've had here on the channel where I extensively outline and break down what a potential offseason could look like this coming offseason for these teams. Of course, GMs, executives, assistant GMs are all sitting down right now with their whiteboards trying to plan and prepare everything. Uh, but in the NBA, you never really know what's coming next. It's one of the craziest leagues always so dramatic and always so uh, exciting this is one of the more requested videos on the channel you'll see some comments flash on the screen here as i'm kind of introing the video uh, but if you are new to utility sports make sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel for more and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more content i can see how many views we're getting from notifications and i continue to see that number growing and growing which i really really appreciate and without further ado let's jump into that video preview here we're going to start by recapping this past season which ended in a way that i don't think a lot of blazers fans or damian lillard really wanted to see of course you know not with the way that they wanted it to when it comes to winning and losing and And then Dame time, we're going to talk about Damian Lillard a little bit uh, about maybe his patient level, uh, patience level, excuse me, with the organization and what we think could potentially happen with him and his tenure in Portland. Then we'll look at 2023 NBA draft picks, uh, the situation that they are currently in, how many picks they have, where they currently sit in the draft lottery as well, the odds at landing Victor Wembanyama, and also just the odds of moving up into the top four, which is not a very high climb for Portland we'll then look at the 2023 NBA draft targets guys that I have specifically pinpointed as good options for this team to address some of their really glaring needs we'll also talk about that pick in general specifically one of those top ones on how they could maybe look to reshuffle and kind of remake their bed so to speak with how they're trying to you know move some pieces around and really trying to put a winning formula uh, around the Blazers, then we'll look at NBA free agency. I think free agency for Portland is a lot more simple than it is for some of the other teams we've covered so far. Just looking at the contracts they already have on the books, we'll talk about it, but it's a little more limited. And then the early outlook for next season. This is really the most important part of the video. Uh, it's part of why I save it for last. Now it is an early outlook. There's a lot of things that can change between now and the start of next season, but I have a pretty good indication and generally a pretty good feel on where some of these teams are headed and, and kind of what direction they're in. And I think Portland's is one that you're going to want to stick around to until the end because there is a lot uh, to break down with this team and a lot that I think is going to go into some of the decisions that they're about to make over the next couple months. Season recap, this team finished 33 and 49, which was 13th in the Western Conference. Clearly not where you wanted to see them at. Before the year, I believe I picked them to finish 10th in the Western Conference. Uh, so a little bit off, but of course, the end of the year, we'll, we'll talk about why they ended up where they did. Uh, but I think the biggest place to start is obviously the franchise superstar, Dame Dalla, Damian Lillard, uh, had a career year, essentially, in terms of his actual statistical output. Now, across the league, there was a lot more numbers that were pretty gaudy this year in terms of, you know, numbers of 20 point per game scores and, and so on and so forth. There was, I believe, five or six guys that finished with 30 plus points per game. Damian Lillard was one of them uh, and is definitely going to be somebody we see as an all NBA selection this year. I think he had a very good individual season uh, and it's kind of a, a shame that they finished so poorly because Dame did everything he realistically could to try and help this team win games and put them in positions to win games. Uh, but quite frankly, there's so many holes in this roster and, and there's a lot of reliance on other players that we'll talk about here in a second. I think another big positive and one that really, I think, has Rip City buzzing and a lot of national media members as well, uh, which is good to see for Portland, who typically gets a little bit less national media love. I'm glad to see them getting some. Shaden Sharp, uh, very, very dynamic, athletic, young freak player who has some really interesting upside to him. Uh, last year in the draft, I think he was one of the more difficult players to perfectly analyze and evaluate because, one, he had not played a collegiate game. Secondly, uh, you know, you're watching him in a high school gym and he's 
a lot of the times the biggest, most, most athletic guy on the floor on a very small court. But if you remember the last year, I was very, very high on his upside. I thought he had the shot making skill set that he needs to be a, a good wing in the NBA. And I think he really showcased that, especially down the stretch for this team. Uh, he really became the go-to guy for them once Dame was out of the lineup uh, full time. And, you know, no Grant, no Simons on nights. Shane Sharp stepped up big. You know, you think to you think to some of the performances where he scored 20 plus points a game uh, in some matchups where you know the Blazers won uh, when they weren't expected to. I think a good example of that is uh, a crushing defeat for the Minnesota Timberwolves in Minnesota. Damian uh, or no Damian Lillard, of course. Jaden Sharp. I, they were I think down or favored to lose by 16 points. I think Minnesota was favored to win by 16, uh, and Shaden Sharp happened. Uh, he's just a very fun, good young player, and I think there's a lot of hope that he could become a Kobe Bryant-esque type athlete. Now, obviously, I'm not suggesting he's going to be a top 20 player uh, of all time or anything like that, but, you know, kind of the same or similar, at least, statistical output as a rookie with some of those similar athletic flashes and shot-making potential that he showed, that there's some hope that he could become a dynamic great wing in this league for years to come jeremy grant scored 20 plus points a game uh started the year very very well which is a very portland thing to do where they start the year way better than they actually are uh and and jeremy grant this is going to be one of the parts of the video where you guys just have to bear with me a little bit i really don't think he impacts winning as much as people would assume he does you know he has the archetype every team's looking for a 6-9 wing who can be somewhat of a hybrid defender protect the rim as a weak side guy does a pretty good job on the ball as well there's just something about jeremy grant that everywhere he goes the team really doesn't get better and when he leaves they don't really get worse like i, I know yes detroit took a step back this year yes but they also didn't have kate cunningham i think that probably has a big factor in that as well and they were playing a whole bunch of young guys and project centers the entire season you know i like Jeremy Grant, to me, everyone was worried about Denver. They lo lose him. They bring in Aaron Gordon. And, oh, my gosh, they just can't lose, seemingly. I I'm just kind of out on the Jeremy Grant train. But I don't think Portland is. We'll talk about that later. I, I do think he's going to be important for them as, like, a fourth or fifth guy if they figure out a way to really build this roster out. But if you're looking at this list, there's really not a, a likelihood that he's the fourth or fifth guy just with what they have. Anthony Simons probably one of the biggest uh, fan favorites. For Blazers fans, I said it last year, I think he'd be such a fantastic six man. And I know that sounds crazy because he scored over 20 points a game as well, and he did it pretty efficiently. If you're looking up and down this roster, though, they can't guard anybody. They're not that good defensively. They don't have individually good defensive players. And I almost feel bad for Chauncey Billups because I really think in his own mind, in his heart, he wants to be a great defensive coach. And you're giving him a whole bunch of guys who can't defend anybody. Uh, which leads us perfectly into Nurkic and Eubanks. Eubanks can't defend without fouling. And uh, Nurkic last offseason was such a bad signing. And I said that during my NBA free agency live stream. People and viewers pushed back on that hard saying, oh, look at his numbers. And, you know, he's kind of a pretty good playmaker. I think Nurkic is a good player. They just paid him too much money. Uh, and I, I just, you know, with his availability, he hasn't played, I think, 70 plus games more than once in the last four years. I uh, also played his lowest minutes per game, I believe, since 2018 or maybe it was 2019. So, I mean, all the stuff with Nurkic is not trending in the right direction. And the team is losing. And they have a ton of money committed across the guys uh, named Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, Yusuf Nurkic. On the fact that Eubanks on the stretch was playing more minutes. I, now, I do think Eubanks was a very nice pickup for them. The way that they added him to their roster last year after he was bought out by Toronto, which made no sense to me. Like, that's not a bad find, but the issue is you can't rely on Eubanks for 25 minutes a game. You just can't. It'd be like if the Suns were trying to play Landale for, like, actually 25 minutes a night every night. That would just be ridiculous and something they can't afford to do. And and unfortunately, Portland's been trying to do that. Uh, and they're just they're not, you're not going to be a good defensive team with the guys on the screen here. Damian Lillard, Shaden Sharp, Jeremy Grant, like, you're just, that's not going to win you a lot of games defensively. And are they good enough offensively? Like, that's where the Shaden Sharp's development really comes in key and I, I think the reason why I'm so stern in my belief that Anthony Simon should be a great six man is I think they need a bigger defensive minded guard in there like you look at what Boston has with Marcus Smart and yeah I know Marcus Smart doesn't grow on trees you can't just find another like three of them around in the league 
but you need something similar ish to that that can really complement your starting lineup. And then, oh, Damian Lillard is about to come out of the game with six minutes left in the first quarter. Guess who's coming in? Anthony, Anthony Simons. And all of a sudden, your offense is still humming the same way. You maybe sub in another defensive guy. And if you want to close with him down the stretch, with him and Dame, that's really what you should do. I, I think people really get lost too much in the idea of, oh, this guy's a starter, this guy's not. Most of the starting versus being a six man is all about staggering minutes in my eyes. And if you want to close a game with two guys on the floor, you just do that, right? That just Anthony Simons can close games, which is way more important than opening games anyway. Dame Simons, I, I think could close. I just, I don't know. I, I just don't love what they've done. I don't love the roster that they really have that much. Uh, and then the biggest issue, and this is really what affects their win total every year by the end, they just they tank and they tank and they tank and they tank and they tank guys 16 through 24 they played 24 players this year uh and you know not that that's completely out of the realm of possibility throughout a year with injuries and everything but they're doing it intentionally to lose games at the end of the year this is two years in a row they have become clear blatant tankers they have no shame no embarrassment at all and blazers fans i understand that you're probably in on it too because you know, draft lottery odds. And they did a good job. They move up to fifth in the lottery this year. I just don't, I just don't know though, if they don't move up in the lottery this year, if I really love the direction of their franchise, which leads me here to the big question about Damian Lillard. And, you know, I'm kind of using his moniker here as a uh, little bit of a pun Dame time. Is it Dame time for the front office to make a decision on Damian Lillard? And, you know, it's been a busy off season so far for him. Uh, just with some of the, you know, kind of quotes that is uh, that just kind of came out recently too on Dame kind of questioning uh, the direction of the franchise a little bit, not fully, but a little bit and saying that, hey, if they're going to draft a young guy and we're going to try and win with young players, which is what they've been doing a little bit, Damian Lillard understands it doesn't really give them a good shot at pushing for an NBA title. And I almost feel bad for Dame a little bit here because so much of his career based on, you know, national media reporting and the types of questions he gets asked by reporters specifically, which puts him in a tough spot about his future in Portland and how long he's going to stay with the organization despite losing and this, that, and the other thing. So much of his career has been made about loyalty and he is a very loyal player. He's probably one of the more loyal superstars in the NBA, if not the most loyal superstar in the NBA as of right now. But I, I, I think he's at a spot where he's, kind of second guessing if he does want to finish his career in Portland. And I'm not suggesting that he is going to 100% request a trade or anything like this, but I do think that is a realm of possibility more so than it was a year ago and definitely significantly more so than it was three years ago, which if you're, if you're a big fan of Dame, which I myself, I like Damian Lillard a lot too. I mean, look at this big time Dame fan. Uh, I love watching him play. He's been a joy for the Portland Trailblazers. So many awesome moments. I mean, you think about the playoff moments alone, and that's already something that's incredible, but he's been carrying that franchise for well over a decade now at this point. He's been an awesome, awesome player. You even think back to his early days with LaMarcus on just how enjoyable he was to watch, uh, even back to his rookie season where it just seemed like he was making highlight play after highlight play. Uh, I, I mean, he's just been a joy to watch, but I, I think Portland's at a spot where they might have a little bit of a problem on their hand. And... The big question now is what pathway do they take? I think that there's two clear pathways for them. Pathway number one is keep Draymond, or uh, excuse me, Draymond Green. Wow, you can tell I've been uh, thinking about Golden State too much here over the last couple of days. Pathway one is keep Damian Lillard, trade their first round pick away, which is what I think Damian Lillard is putting a little bit of pressure on the front office and Joe Crone and their GM to consider doing. And the only reason they wouldn't do it is if it's pick number one and they're landing Victor Wembanyama, which obviously you would not want to do that. And then you also would keep your old core, you know, Nurkic, Grant, those are the pieces. And you would try to win. So what would they trade with their first round pick? Potentially Simons. If they went out, wanted to go out and get, you know, a premier creme de la creme type player, that's what they'd have to give up is Simons because he's on a nice big contract, matches money pretty well with other players. You trade a pick that's maybe top five-ish, um, could be, you know, as low as seven, eight or nine, uh, but likely would not be. So, you know, it's very likely that they could actually explore that uh, and put themselves in a position to win and, and appease Damian Lillard. The second pathway is trade Dame, which 
is already kind of a hot topic, right? You move off of him, try and get good amount of assets, at least two, maybe three first round picks, uh, plus some swaps in there, I'm guessing. I'd be interested to see what Damian Lillard does fetch on the open market. I don't think it's going to be Kevin Durant type value where we see, you know, two good key contributors and four first round picks. I just don't really see that. So I think, you know, three first rounders is probably kind of the, the max that you're going to see for him, just given his age, uh, some of the more recent injury history. You think back to some of that core uh, issues, you know, core muscle issues he was having over the last year and a half or so. Uh, I think some of that does play into it. Now, I know Kevin Durant's also had his injuries, but it's Kevin Durant, kind of a different player, different ballpark. Uh, in terms of their longevity and their careers, in my opinion, which is why I think Damian Lillard is going to be valued a little bit lesser by other teams. You also look at the fact that they'll keep their first. They're still going to hope it's number one, right? Because Victor Wembanyama is that much of a, a franchise-changing player, and they'd build around the young core. That's where they keep Anthony Simons. They'd keep Shaden Sharp, uh, who I think that either way they should keep Shaden Sharp. I don't think that they should move him even if they took pathway one. And the goal is not that you're trying to lose now, but you're trying to win later. You're trying to set yourself up to have like a significantly strong window where you're one, first of all, competitive for a long time, which is the most important thing in the NBA. So many people, especially on, you get on social media and everyone says, well, if they're not going to win a championship, what's the point? The point is have a fun basketball product to watch for fans. Support your fan base by showing them that you do want to win and trying to take steps year in, year out to improve. And then ultimately, you hope that at some point something clicks and you get to a spot where you can win a championship. I think over the last few years with some of the things that have happened, we've seen it's really, really tough to buy a championship. Uh, it's just really not the way that it works in the NBA. Um, you know, you can argue Kevin Durant, but that team was already established before Durant got to Golden State anyway. I mean, look at what Brooklyn tried to do. They tried to buy one and they never got out of the second round of the playoffs. It's possible Phoenix doesn't at some point win. It's really, really tough to win a championship. So you want continued success. And for me, pathway one is a no-go. There is no way I'm going to keep Damian Lillard, trade my first round pick that's going to be in the top 10. And I'm there's I'm just not going to try and win around Yusuf Nurkic uh, at being one of my key old players. I, I just, I can't see it. You think about going up against Nikola Jokic in Denver and does this team have any shot? Like, I just don't really see it. You would need a trade to really open up for somebody like Premier Premier. Like, I'm talking the Kevin Durant's of the world type player, I think, for this team to really have a shot. And then my question is, compared to the field, you know, what the Knicks have to offer, what the Pelicans have to offer. I mean, even if the Thunder and Jazz wanted to jump in on something, do, do the Blazers really have enough to get something done in a deal compared to those teams? My answer is probably not for that anyway which is why and this is going to be tough because I, I don't love the idea of trading Damian Lillard but if it is about trying to find that you know, continued long-term success trading Dame might be first of all a good look for him with his agent because at some point he could potentially request it and if the franchise were to own some of that I'm sure fans would not be happy and I understand I am exterior to the fan base, so I don't have the best feel on how the fans would react to this. My guess is not happy because Damian Lillard, in my opinion, is the best player in franchise history, at least, you know, right there in that discussion for best player in the franchise history. I'm sure Drexler would like to have a word with me, but, uh, you know, it's just for me, it's tough to really see this team pushing their chips in and and getting to a spot where they don't end up being one of the worst teams in the league in two three years. Uh, I just think that's a really, really tough position for them. Uh, with all that they mortgaged. I just think it's better to reset the deck and try and win later while building something competitive and good. And they already have some of those building blocks to do it. I think Simons can be a very good player. Uh, and I think it, without Dame, Simons would be a starter. You know, I, I know I was a little critical on Simons earlier. I, I don't think Simons is a bad player at all. I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying that. I just think that Portland has a fundamental issue with their backcourt defensively trying to guard guys. Uh, so if they do trade Dame, then Simons becomes your starting point guard. And I don't think there's any issue with that. But I, I think the biggest issue is this team's just, it just doesn't match up well with other teams around the league. Like you look at Portland, and I just don't have any clue in the world how they would match up with certain teams. I just don't, I don't see it. Uh, I just haven't. And I think that they're in a tough spot. So you trade him is kind of what I think as a potential option. 
So let's look at the draft lottery odds now. And Portland, like I said earlier, sits fifth on the table with a 10.5% chance to land pick number one. Of course, Victor Wembanyama would be very, very good for them. But there's other options here too at the board. You think, you know, 10.5% chance to move up to two, 10.6% chance to move up to three, 10.5% chance to move up to four. You put those numbers together and they have roughly a 42.1% chance to be picking in the top four. And if you've been following the draft coverage here on the channel, you know that the consensus top four, for me at least, uh, and across the board for a lot of people in some loose order is Victor Wembanyama, Scoot Henderson, Amen Thompson, and Brandon Miller. I think all four of those guys would be really great additions to Portland. Now, if they get pick one, Victor Wembanyama's the one player in this draft that I would say, okay, maybe you do keep Dame and you try and win with Dame, have Wembanyama, you keep the young core too. And they might just be skilled enough to win while being young. Otherwise, all the other picks, like let's say Scoot Henderson, Amen Thompson, that kind of doesn't really fit with Damian Lillard's timeline. And in fact, positionally kind of contradicts Damian Lillard a little bit. So that's where the door opens up maybe a little bit more for a Damian Lillard trade. But if they stay at five, which you see, it's actually not that great of a chance for them to actually be picking five. Only 2.2% of the time will they be picking fifth. Uh, in this year's draft, which is kind of funny how the odds end up shaking out on that. When they have the fifth best odds, it's almost unlikely for them to be picking fifth. You know, they could also move down, which is why guys like Taylor Hendricks, Jairus Walker could make quite a bit of sense for them. Uh, there's a lot of wiggle room here for Portland. So let's take a look at some of their actual draft picks as well. So remember, they have the fifth best odds. We'll see where that pick actually lands on the lottery since I'm recording prior to the lottery. They also have pick 23. That one is set in stone. This pick is from the New York Knicks and what was a very, very good Josh Hart trade, in my opinion, for the Portland Trailblazers. It made a lot of sense for their tax relief long term. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Then also pick 43. So a second rounder. And the one thing about Portland's future that I do really like, I think Mike Schmitz was an awesome hire for that front office as an assistant GM. I think he's somebody who uh, typically I'm not as glowing about other people's draft evaluation. And sometimes I just think a lot of people miss the ball on certain things, which is completely fine to do. I mean, sometimes I know viewers think I've missing the ball on something. And sometimes I am. Uh, there's a lot of times I've messed something up and uh, I, you know, it's easy to point out people's mistakes as well. So I, you know, I fall victim to that a little bit, but Mike Schmitz is somebody who I think is actually very thorough. I think that a lot of the time I find myself in some agreement with him on some of the stuff that I've read from him in the past. Now, uh, it's not like I've you know been laser focused to his content. I don't typically look at what others are saying that often, but occasionally I do. Schmitz is somebody I agreed with a little bit more so than others, which is why I think he was a very good hire for that front office. And so far, you look at the returns from his first draft with Shaden Sharp and specifically second rounder Jabari Walker, you have to feel very good about what they got from them already at this point. So I think Portland, with having three picks this year, they're in a pretty good spot to add more young talent to this team. And some notable draft targets that I like for them, we're going to focus mostly on first round level players. Guard Anthony Black, you talk about a, a guard who is bigger more switchable defensively gives them some of that defensive playmaking around a guy like Damian Lillard and or Anthony Simons. I think Anthony Black is the perfect guard for them this year because at six foot seven, he has fantastic defensive feel. He's a skillful offensive connector, very good downhill passer as well. Sees the entire court, passes with a ton of anticipation. I think he's a very smart player. I think he would be a perfect fit into that backcourt. Now, I know Blazers fans are going to push back on that and say, we don't need another guard. Anthony Black is six foot seven. So if you're, you know, arguing that you need a wing who's six eight, I just, I don't think that one inch of height should make the biggest of world the difference. I would just take the smart, good player. Uh, if you believe that he's as good as I believe he is, I think he's worth a, a top five, top six pick in this year's draft. And then you look at uh, forwards in this draft as well. Brandon Miller, of course, if they move up would make some sense. Taylor Hendricks, Jairus Walker. Two guys who I do think also make quite a bit of sense. Ryan Rupert, uh, an NBL player. I think Mike Schmitz, you know, clearly has an understanding as well. Uh, I'd be surprised if Mike Schmitz is just not flat out running the draft. If you want to know why I'm referencing him so much, I think he will be running the draft board completely for Portland. For the most part, I think he'll have final say on decisions when it comes to drafting prospects just based on his track record. Uh, and he's very aware of the NBL. He's spent a lot of time in his life actually in Australia watching the NBL. So he has a good understanding of the league. 
the difficulties, the strengths of the league. And I think Ryan Rupert is a player who's going to stick out to Portland, especially with that pick number 23. If uh, they want to move that up, it could be a potential option as well. Gigi Jackson, you look back to the last draft when they took a guy like Shaden Sharp, who was extremely young, reclassified into his draft, and Portland opted for him. Gigi Jackson kind of falls into a similar timeline type critique here where he's super, super young. Now, he actually did play college basketball, unlike Shaden Sharp, but I think Gigi Jackson would be a very nice uh, young piece for them that if they do go with the young, the youth route and they try and build this thing long-term, Gigi Jackson's upside is very immense. Leonard Miller is another player who I know uh, Portland would consider just given his physical traits that he possesses. Uh, you also look at guys like Victor Wembanyama, uh, Trace Jackson Davis, Derek Lively, and Noah Clowney are all players that I like a decent amount too for them. So, I, I mean, Victor Wembanyama would obviously be the, the guy you want, of course. But Trace Jackson Davis, I think, is smart defensive player who knows how to get to his spots and would bring some real good athleticism to this front court, which is something I think they need. Derek Lively as well, probably a trade-up option. They'd have to probably move up from 23 to get him in my estimation. Noah Clowney, I think a little bit less upside, but also maybe just a safer pick because he rebounds and he can shoot. Uh, now, I know the shooting splits aren't great for him yet, but I think that's something that's going to progress. He's going to grow into that a little bit more. He's in the league. I think that's something that's going to scale up to the NBA rather well, uh, just with a little bit more spacing and the role he's likely going to play. I think he's just going to be very comfortable right away on day one. Uh, so I, I expect Noah Clowney to have a nice career. So Portland could consider any of these guys, all of these guys. I think all of them fit pretty well into their current roster. And also, you know, you look at their current roster, the youth part of it as well, with having one guard, kind of a wing type player in Shaden Sharp, a guard in Anthony Simons. You could really argue that, like, hey, whatever good players available, that's what they should draft, uh, which is why this list was pretty easy for me to construe because it's like, oh, well, this player I think fits into these guys' skills, uh, and I just don't see them doing anything completely bold and irrational uh, just because I trust their management when it comes to the actual draft night. Which leads us here into NBA free agency, and they really only have one option in my eyes, and I'd be shocked if really anything else happens in free agency. That one option is sign Jeremy Grant. Five years, $233 million is the maximum contract he could sign for. Now, for me, the one issue I have with signing Jeremy Grant uh, to that is one, he's not worth it. Uh, that's, you know, 40 plus million dollars a year, uh, roughly 47 ish million dollars a year. I just, I don't see any way uh, that he should sign for that. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, with the fact that they just traded for him, I think there was an expectation that he would sign during the season on a contract extension around four years, 140 ish million dollars. Uh, and that just never happened. So, Portland's kind of in a spot where if they lose him in free agency, they just flat out lose him. Uh, they traded for him, didn't keep him. Uh, and then secondly, that doesn't even open up cap space for them. They would have roughly about like $9 million in cap space if they just flat out lost him. And that's if they renounce rights to some other guys. They, they did open up the pathway to keeping him by trading Josh Hart, which is why I mentioned that earlier. It's a very important move for them by trading Josh Hart. They opened the pathway to having money against the luxury tax to fit Jeremy Grant's contract in, which is why they needed to do that, by the way. And they got very good value for Josh Hart. So it was a kind of a win-win for that organization, the direction that they were trying to head in. But the issue to me is this team's just not good enough if they lock into Jeremy Grant, but I really think that's what they're going to do. This is not as much about what I would do. This is about what I think they would do. To be honest, if it was me, I was I would try and sign and trade him, see if you can send him to a team that doesn't have cap space and you know say, hey, Jeremy, we're going to send you to a winner. We're going to try and get a couple assets back for you and, and kind of reshuffle our deck again. And like I said earlier, like out of all the bad options, I think trading Damian Lillard might be the safest route for them to actually find long-term stability. Uh, because right now I think Portland's in a really, really shaky spot long-term. And I think, you know, if they're committing to the core of Shaden Sharp, or you know, not Shaden Sharp, I don't want to include him in there because I think he has some very, very high upside. But if they're, they're, if they're locking into Damian Lillard, Jeremy Grant, Yusuf Nurkic, I just, I, I can't say I'm buying into that. I just can't. And it's not Dame's fault. It's more so Nurkic and Grant to me are not a great front court uh, and not a front court that's going to win you a lot of games in the NBA. 
uh, in the year 2023 and moving forward. So I, I just have serious issues with the way that this team is built, uh, specifically on the defensive end. Uh, you know, Jeremy Grant gets some awesome blocks, but I, I just, he's not enough for a team defense to be very good in the NBA this year uh, or moving forward. So I have my own, you know, concerns. I, I know I've been way more pessimistic in this video than all the other ones, uh, but we're at that point of the uh, the timeline here in offseason recording where, you know, I'm just naturally going to be less excited about Portland's future than some of the other teams because I, I just think Portland is not as in as strong of a position, uh, which I don't want to be this negative, but I just, I'm going to be honest in my videos. I just don't think Jeremy Grant is going to be the, the long-term franchise savior, um, which I know some people are saying, oh, well, if we're healthy, this, that. okay. I, I mean, let's see it. Well, let's see him be healthy. Let's see him play an entire season and not tank down the last 15 games of the year either. That's what I want to see, but we haven't in two years. And uh, we'll see if we ever get that during Joe Cronin's time as uh, GM there in Portland. I think that's a fair question. So the early outlook, I kind of spoiled this a little bit, but I think Portland's in a really terrible spot. Uh, to be completely frank, I just do not like where they're at. I do not like where they're headed. Now, a lot of things can change in the NBA, and ping pong balls might save this franchise. Landing pick number one, I think, is more important for Portland than any other team in the league. You know, you could say San Antonio, you could say all these teams that need a big marketable star. Drafting Victor Wembanyama would not only convince Damian Lillard to spend the rest of his career in Portland, it would make Portland a playoff team again. It would give them a, a dynamic shot blocker, which is something they just have not really had in Damian Lillard's tenure in Portland, which is something I think they badly need behind him. It would also empower them to play Anthony Simons with Damian Lillard a ton because you have someone so big and lengthy back there who's just a, an awesome shot blocker. They'd have another fun little wrinkle to their offense with Victor Wembanyama stepping in and averaging 20 plus points a game in his career, like right away, he's going to step in and average over 20 points a game. No question about that. He's going to average eight to 10 boards a game. He's going to get two, three blocks a game. And it, it just completely shifts the dynamic of this roster and, and this team. And all of a sudden having Jeremy Grant, Nurkic and, and everybody kind of moving him down a peg because and Wembenyama is instantly the second best player on the team and within a year probably becomes the best player on the team like it just it, it completely reshuffles everything basketball so much is about like role definition role clarity having the right pieces and like ancillary pieces around stars uh, and players who are supremely skilled and I think Portland's a, a day late and a dollar short when it comes to their skill set uh, for top end players, they have Dame, but they don't have the other guy next to Dame, in my opinion, which is why Wembenyama would just completely turn this whole franchise around. You could say that for a lot of teams, but I think Portland's more in that like mesh spot where if they don't figure that out, they don't get that type of guy. They could really risk not only just losing year in, year out, and not making the playoffs, but losing the best player in franchise history in Damian Lillard uh, and just losing a lot of games for a long time because there's really no clear out for them, especially with the way the new lottery systems set up. Like you might be the worst team in the league and never get the first overall pick. Even if you're the worst team for three straight years, it's just very likely uh, with only a 14% chance. I, there's not a clear, Oh my gosh, this is a home run. And you look at next year's draft 2024 significantly thinner, significantly weaker at the top as well than this year's class. So I, I think, Yes, it's a little too early to tell because of the draft lottery not having taken place yet, but I think Portland's in a really rough spot. I think they really do need some luck in the lottery for things to turn around, and we'll see if they get it. I hope for their sake that they do. Again, I, I don't want this video to think I'm just terribly hateful against the Blazers. I, I don't have any issues with the Blazers. I want the Blazers to win. I think Portland's a really good NBA city. I think Portland's a, uh, a really diehard city. Blazers fans, I think, are some of the best fans in the world, honestly. Uh, with the amount of love they have. I, I mean, Rip City is an awesome, awesome uh, basketball city in, in general. And I, I just want this team to be good. I, I just I just don't think that they're at that spot yet. So, uh, you know, I went on a little mini rant there. Hopefully you guys didn't hate every second of that, um, especially you Blazers fans. I'm sorry. So thank you for watching. Um, if you did stick to this point, I do really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I recommend checking out some of the other off-season previews. I promise you this one was way more negative, way more pessimistic than the other ones. Um, so go check those ones out. I'm not going to be as hateful and as spiteful uh, as I was in this one. And, I, I, you know, things can happen. The NBA can change. Maybe there's an out for this team that I'm not seeing. 
Uh, typically, they do like to reshuffle the deck and, and make some moves. You think back to the CJ McCollum trade where they kind of rotated around the roster and, and then found a way to add in Jeremy Grant. Maybe they have a way to bring in a more supremely talented player than Jeremy Grant that I don't see as of right now. But I, I'm just a little skeptical on the potential of that. Thanks again, though, for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'd really appreciate that. And we'll catch you in the very next utility sports video.